Hey guys, welcome to this C++ game development series where we are creating a simple 2D snake game using C++ and SFML. In the last video, we created the asset manager class to store all the textures and fonts. So in this video, we will create a game class and all the code that we have inside our main function will be moved there. So let's start by creating a new class. I'll name it game. And now we have our game.cpp and game.hpp file. Inside game.hpp, I'll create a structure called context. This structure will hold the asset manager, state manager and the rendering window. Basically, we'll pass an object of this structure to each of the states so that the state can access the assets, load new states and draw on the rendering window. So I'll add assetman.hpp, stateman.hpp and renderwindow.hpp. The structure will hold unique pointers to all the members. For this, we will also need the memory header. And now I can add the three unique pointers to asset manager, state manager and render window. Next, we will have to add a default constructor named context. Inside this, I'll initialize all the three unique pointers using std make unique. Next, let's add the private members for this game class. First one will be a shared pointer to context. I'll name this as m underscore context. Then we will need a constant time object called time per frame. This will be equal to 1 over 60 seconds, which effectively means 60 frames per second. And at last, I'll add a public run method to this game class. Now let's move to the game.cpp file. First thing we need to do here is to create a new window. For this, I'll use the create method on the m underscore window stored inside the context member. Create needs a video mode, a title and a style. Video mode controls the width and height of the window. Title will be displayed at the title bar and style will define how our window resizes. Here I'll use SF style close so that the window cannot be maximized. After creating the window, we will have to push the first state into the state manager. But since we do not have any states right now, I'll just put a to do note here saying add first state to m underscore states. Now let's move the code from our main function inside game class. We have already initialized the window so we don't need the first line. I'll cut all the remaining code and paste it inside the run method. And we have some errors here, so let's first resolve them. Circle shape will need the circle shape header and located under SFML graphics. The window variable here will be m underscore window from m underscore context. And for event, we need event.hpp located under SFML window. And let's replace this window variable too. Now everything looks fine. Let's go to the main.cpp and add the code to run this game. First, let's add the game.hpp. Next, I'll create a new game object called game. And then I'll call the run method on it. And now let's try to run this code. For that, I'll open the integrated terminal. And inside here, I'll run the make command. This will compile and link the code and will generate an executable file called main under the bin folder. To run it, we will have to type bin slash main and hit enter and we get a segmentation fault here and this happened because I forgot to initialize the m underscore context member so let's do that inside the constructor since this is a shared pointer I'll use std make shared and now if we build and run this program we will get the sfml works window with green circle this shows that our game class and the run method are working as expected Right now, this window is getting updated as fast as possible. So let's write some code to limit it to 60 frames per second. For that, I'll first create a SF clock object outside the is open loop. We will also need to store the time since last frame. For this, I'll use SF time and will initialize it with SF time zero. Inside the is open loop, first thing I'll do is I'll store the time that has elapsed since last iteration. For this, I'll write time since last frame plus equal to clock dot restart. So the way restart works is it puts the clock counter back to zero and returns the elapsed time since the clock was started, which is good. But you might ask, when does the clock start? So if you check the constructor of SF clock, you'll see that the clock starts automatically after it has been constructed, which means the clock will start as soon as we create the clock object. Now we have the time since last frame. We will create a while loop which will execute only when time since last frame becomes more than time per frame. 
This is showing an error because I think I wrote time per second in the header file instead of time per frame. I'll quickly correct that. Inside this while loop, I'll decrease the time since last frame by time per frame. And now we can move all this event handling code inside this while loop. So basically we have now made the update cycle of our game consistent. An update will only happen if the time since last update is more than 1 over 60 seconds. You won't see any visual difference, but let's try to build and run this code to see if it still works. And there it is, our application is still working. There are some more changes that we have to make inside the run method. I'll write them as to do for now. First one will be to call process state change on the m underscore state. This is required so that the state change happens before the update cycle begins. Next, we'll get the current state from state manager and call process input on it. This will allow the state to handle all the input events like mouse clicks and key presses. After processing inputs, we will call the update method on current state and we will pass the constant time per frame as input parameter to this method. Here, the state will do all the required calculations and updates. And as the last step, we will call the draw method on the current state so that all the sprites and texts are drawn on the render window. Right now, this code will not work because we haven't pushed any state inside the state manager. So let's keep this as commented for now. And as I was writing this, I remember that we forgot to call the init and start method on the new state being added inside the process state change method. So let's do that. Let's go to the process state change inside stateman.cpp. Here, after we have pushed the m underscore new state in the m underscore state stack, let's call the start and init method on the top state of state stack. This will make sure that the new state completes its initialization before the update cycle starts. So that was it for the game class for now. In the next video, we will start working on the first state of our game, the main menu state. And in that video, we will complete the to-do points which we have added in game class. So hope to see you in the next video.